Welcome to the Coffee Snobs Podcast, where we just really love good coffee. So grab your cup of coffee and join us each episode as we explore any and everything coffee related. From pour overs to lattes to the coffee experience, we explore it all because, well, life's too short to drink bad coffee. Let's go. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Coffee Snobs Podcast. My name is Aaron. We have my good buddy Tyler on today. What's up? Dude, not a lot. And I'm really excited for this episode. This one's a lot of fun. We have a very special guest. Yes. A very special guest from a long distance. But before we get into it, Tyler, what is new with you and coffee? What is new with me and coffee? Well, other than enjoying my lovely fall beverages, which I'm sure you probably had a couple yourself. (laughs) Um, I'll never tell. My, don't ask, don't tell. My sister recently was in Guatemala, and Guatemala. Where, grows, where is that? At? That is in Central America. So look at that. So there we go. south of Mexico, for those that are geographically challenged. Um, and coffee is a large export of Guatemala. Yeah, large. So my sister was kind enough to bring back myself and i think she brought you a bag also i do have a bag of guatemalan coffee yes very thankful for that i have not i i just got back in town so i have not uh been able to taste it yet but you had it yeah i tried it in a pour over um and this is like pretty this is very fresh yeah it's a it's a medium roast it smells good um their packaging is very plain and it does not mention anything about like a roasted date but it's I mean, it smelled fairly fresh, and I had it in a pour over. It was pretty good, straight off the farm. So yeah, so we'll be diving into that. We'll we'll once I crack it open and we have uh, the full bag, um, we will uh, we'll dive into it and kind of describe yeah. it a little better. But Aaron, what about you? What's new in the coffee game? Well, uh, a few episodes back, I think probably like episode three or four, I mentioned of selling my espresso machine. Your and, Breville, correct? Yes, I sold my Breville and been saving, just been kind of waiting. Um, there was a coffee machine that came on the market shortly around the time that I sold my machine, uh, the Gaza, uh, Gaja Classic Pro. People Italian? Say it, yeah, they say it differently on like the different YouTube videos. Depending that on are, how fancy and snobbish right. you are. <clears throat> but it's a full manual machine, um, and it is finicky. Uh, because it's an Italian, which I think everything made in Italian and in Italy, uh, Italian made is finicky. But I'm getting used to it. So you're enjoying it. I I do love it, and I, and the reason why I think I enjoy it so much is the commercial grade steam wand, and it is a very powerful steam wand for the price point that it's at. So it's like four hundred and fifty dollars. That's not too um, bad. Not for too bad. An espresso machine. No, and um, but it being full manual, you know, that does seem a little high. But when you've got to time everything out, and uh, but and yeah, well, I'll do a review on it here shortly because there are a lot of quirks and things that are just slightly frustrating. But the quality of coffee that it produces, espresso that it produ- produces, is really on point. So. It's cool. Very excited to have that in my yeah, daily routine maybe, now. Maybe in the future you could do like a comparison of your old machine and your new machine. Oh, for sure, for like sure. That. Yeah, it's it's. So we have a a Wega at um at the office, and it's a you know it's a entry level commercial machine, and I would say that my machine I can't output as much as, but it's it's on point. I mean, it's very very close in uh, a commercial machine to a home residential machine. So. Uh, that is what is new with me and coffee. So let's get into this episode today. So, Tyler, you have a friend that is surprisingly uh, yes, I do have you one. Do. We, one more. <laughs> um, so now we know that he has two. Chad, we're it's Chad's still kinda, it's still kind of out. We don't know. He's he's still on probation, so we you know we don't fully know. But uh, you have a friend in town from. So uh, a brief introduction. A friend from college, so I'm getting old. This is like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, originally from the States, but he and his wife, they live in outside of Madrid, Spain. Dude, so from Spain. Quite a distance. Yeah, quite a distance. And He's a extremely smart guy. Like 
Super. Yeah, he's a science teacher over in in Spain. Um, really cool guy. And apparently, he started listening to the Coffee Snobs podcast. <laughs> I mean, and Adam is fairly new to the um, coffee game, so he's he's learning a lot. And like I said, he's kind of has a scientific mind, so he's you know processing all the data and all this cool stuff. But anyway, um, he and his wife Emily were in town for a couple of days. And I had a chance to sit down with him and kind of uh, talk about his experience with coffee in Spain. So yeah. So it, right quick before we get into it, y'all did a cupping uh, at the we were, house. We went full nerdy. I mean, y'all I mean, did like Adam is uh, still like I said, he's pretty new in his coffee journey. He would actually never even had a pour over. Wow. So, because they, because their coffee uh, traditions and methods are yes. drastically different than here in the states. Yes, as you'll listen to in the interview just a sec. But yeah, we busted out the Chemex, did some pour overs, and we did a cupping with a couple different uh, coffees. So it was fun. Yeah. So, well, let's get right into it. And here is the interview with our good buddy, Adam. I am here with my good friend, Adam Byerly. Hello, Adam. Hello. Good to be here. Adam and I have been friends for many years now. We first met in college chapel hill Mm -hmm. a long time ago so adam tell us a little bit about yourself yeah so my name is adam and my wife and i about six years ago moved to madrid spain Uh, i've been living there now and now back on u.s soil for a little bit cool so um let's start off adam just tell me a little bit of background about your experience your history with coffee what kind of coffee style you like stuff like that yeah, so I'm kind of a latecomer to coffee. I really didn't start drinking coffee, so I'm 35 right now, probably when I was 32 or 33. So I'm pretty oh, wow. new to the whole thing. Pretty new. Uh, I grew up with a, a mom that was pretty much a coffee addict, and I was like, oh, I never want to be that addicted to something. So, so. what kind of uh, coffee? I'm assuming your mom like, had a drip pot at the house. Yeah, drip pot, you know, and like she was the kind of... She didn't get her coffee by a certain time in the morning. You know, it was like, got to get my coffee in. And I was like, oh, man. And then also had like, you know, those teachers in high school that had the, the terrible coffee breath in the yes. morning. And I was like, oh, man, I don't want to be a bad coffee breath was person. It? So when did you, did you drink, you didn't drink coffee in college? Not too much? No, not really. In fact, it was really when I moved to Spain. The culture of Spain is so much uh, about coffee that I was like, you know, if I'm going to live here, I really got to start drinking some coffee. That's when I started a little bit, especially when we moved back there kind of for a longer term, about four years ago, started. All right. So you say coffee is big in Spanish culture. Mm-hmm. So what what kind of coffee did you start drinking in Spain? Um, so they have something there. It's called Café con Leche. And basically it's kind of like a cortado. So it's about half espresso, half milk, uh, pretty much are the ratios. And that's kind of the most common one. So I started drinking that in different areas around Spain and around Madrid where we live. And uh, so that was kind of my, my main starter coffee that I started with. So an espresso. So, yeah. okay. What's, what are you currently drinking or enjoying? Um, I really like, my kind of go-to is just a latte. So just regular milk, um, uh-huh. latte. And then occasionally maybe if I want a little less milk, I'll do like a, a macchiato or a cortado or something. Do you brew any coffee at home? We do. We have a, um, it's called a cafetera. So I guess it's like a, it's called a mocha pot maybe or something uh, where it percolates up. Okay. Yep. um, Which is pretty common. So Spanish coffee is really, really strong. And that's kind of what you get from that is you get a really, really strong coffee because, you know, your ratio of of beans to water is pretty high. Okay, cool. So you do that at home, a mocha pot. Mm Mm-hmm. What, what kind of coffee do you use? Uh, so there's a Spanish brand that we brought back called Marcia. Uh, it's probably not the best of the best coffee, but uh, it's a pretty common Spanish brand. So we started with that when we kind of would roast our own in Spain. And then uh, we would you do that. And you then roast pro- your own beans or? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just making our own coffee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we haven't gotten into the roasting our own yeah, beans yet. That's I don't want to catch my house on fire or something. <laughs> so uh, haven't done that yet. Yeah, we would do that. And then. We just have a little tiny pot, so it doesn't make a lot. So then we would add, you know, either regular milk to it or, you know, what other other nut milk or something we had in the house. So you don't typically just drink it black? Not usually. Um, I have a few times, but it's it's a really strong and kind of bitter tasting coffee that way. So Mm -hmm. adding something a little bit sweeter kind of makes it easier to go down. 
So the the beans you're using are are those pre ground or whole bean or what's available to you really in in your area? Most stores are going to have like a pre ground um, bean that's already ground up for you, and you open the package and it's it's kind of hard to get through it especially with two people by the time it starts kind of losing its flavor Mm -hmm. uh at our school my wife did start buying the same brand but the whole beans and then she grinds it in the morning and even though it's a drip pot you can tell a huge difference just grinding it every morning and then putting it in the drip pot and having it come through so um that's pretty good too cool uh do you know what kind of grinder you guys have at school oh it's just one of those it's the cheap one so it's just a little you know you just stick it in there and it blade spins and so i don't think it's a burr grinder or anything like that it just has a little yeah that go around well hey but at least you're using a somewhat fresh bean yeah you you can tell a difference in that versus the pre-ground for sure and even people at school they're always like i love when your wife makes coffee because it's so much better so they definitely can tell a difference between the two cool Tell me a little bit about coffee culture in Spain. Yeah, so it's really interesting. Um, so they're definitely, I always talk to my neighbors and my neighbors will go to sleep at like 1230 every every night slash morning. And then they get up at the same time. So they're up at 630 or seven o'clock. Okay. So like caffeine is a huge part of, of them. So they'll usually have a cup, like a cup in the morning at their house or something. Um, and then usually they'll go to work and maybe mid morning, take a break and go and have another little cup of something with some coworkers or some friends, maybe for like 30 minutes. But um, there's never really a mixture of work and coffee. Like coffee is a social event. You you set your work aside and you go and you have a coffee with your coworkers. That's, is that kind of similar to, I guess, what you would call like a Mexican siesta or? Yeah, if they do that. Um, so some Spanish people still do the siesta. That's more in the afternoon time. So I would say a normal Spanish person has a coffee in the morning, probably mid morning, and then probably around five o'clock in the afternoon, they'll have their third cup. And um, are they having like a drip coffee or no, what, are the, what are the most common types of coffee yeah, that you so see in Spain? The awesome part about Spain is that it doesn't matter where you go. It can be the smallest little hole in the wall restaurant, like a mom and pop type of place. And there's always an espresso machine. Um, there's very little drip coffee in Spain. Um, so, you know, you may have someone that doesn't know how to run the machine as well, but it's always going to be espresso, which is kind of nice. And you're talking price on those things is probably like 180 euros. So that's like maybe $2. So it's super cheap and it's espresso. And I mean, usually it's pretty good quality. Uh, your typical coffee shop you go into or a restaurant, I guess you're saying what they're only offering like an espresso shot or... What else are they offering? Yeah, so you have um, Cafe Solo, which is basically just an espresso shot. So either one or two shots of espresso in the little tiny cup. That's probably kind of what you're most familiar with seeing kind of Europeans. Like two ounce, little yeah, tiny? Yeah, two ounce. Um, and then you also have a Cafe Con Leche, which is kind of like what I mentioned earlier, like a Cortado or something like that, where it's about half espresso, half milk. And then you have, you know, Americano, which is basically you're just watered down espresso. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not quite as strong. But there's really not a lot of other options. Frappuccinos. Yeah, there's really nothing. And you and I were talking about this earlier, but really like syrups or pumps or sugar or anything, um, really not a lot. So a normal Spanish person will get probably something like a cafe con leche with maybe two packs of sugar. And they will add sugar, just okay. refined sugar into there because it's a little bit more bitter. Um, but that's all they add. You don't have, you know, your pumpkin spice and your, all these other types. I guess I couldn't live in Spain then. I can't (laughs) have the pumpkin spice. Yeah. Do you have any idea? So you say coffees at like any restaurant you go to basically, Mm -hmm. or do you know if they're using like artisan roasters or do you have any idea what kind of beans they're actually using? You know, I really don't. It's not something, um, I've really started getting more into like the in-depth side of coffee, I guess, Mm -hmm. uh, having come back to the U.S. this summer um, and looking at more, you know, what type of roast type is it and where is it coming from and, you know, how old is the coffee? So a little bit more in detail. So I'm looking forward to going back and seeing a little bit more. I know like in Madrid, uh, in the big city, there are, there's roasting companies that I've seen and stuff like that on the internet. Um, But as for your usual place, they're probably just buying bulk I imagine, I don't imagine they're getting the freshest quality probably. So Yeah, I don't think maybe, I guess what we call third wave coffee over here as Mm -hmm. far as like your artisan shops and small batch roasters. 
You're not yeah. seeing a lot of that over there. Not really. I think it's it's slowly kind of making its way. Um, and you definitely, I mean, we have the Starbucks over there too. And that's kind of, so there are people, Spanish people that go into Starbucks if they want, you know, some sort of variety or something. But it'll be interesting to see if the kind of same thing we've seen in the U.S. So if you're more kind of small shops with mm-hmm. roasters and kind of more variety and locally owned, uh, if we start to see that more in the Spain, in Spain as well. So you said there are Starbucks there. Do they have like a similar menu to the American Starbucks or? It's really similar. Uh, they use some of the more kind of Spanish terminology, but um, yeah, pretty much similar. They have the pumpkin spice latte, okay. um, the frappuccinos, so all those similar things. It's really the only place if you wanted an iced coffee that you could go to. It's not really in any other places. So if you wanted something simple like a, a vanilla latte, you're going to have to pretty much go to Starbucks because yeah. <laughs> your other places aren't going to offer syrups or other right. flavors. I mean, so for instance, like our town, I mean, I don't want to say for sure, but it's a town of about 200,000 people outside of Madrid. And I couldn't tell you of a place that I would go in that town and get a vanilla latte. Sure. Um, hmm. If I go into a Starbucks, yeah, that's the main place. If we wanted, if my wife and I were like, hey, you know, we really want... A pumpkin spice or a vanilla latte or you know something with some cinnamon or something in it we would have to go to starbucks pretty much yeah well that's unfortunate so it sounds like tyler that they're very they're purist when it comes to their coffee very uh espresso based uh only drinks yeah very little flavor kind of surprise they're just very traditional i guess the uh Spanish culture for coffee is quite different than what we have over here in America. Well, Chad mentioned in his trip where they, you would walk up to a bar outside of, uh, of a, of a shop. And just like when I say a bar, just like a, a stand up shop in and, Italy, right? Yep, and you would just get, you know, a two ounce espresso shot, drink it, leave your cup and, and walk on. And, and yeah. that's totally different than our American uh, third wave, whatever yeah, we're calling it. Come into a coffee now. shop and hang out all day. Right. Suck their Wi-Fi, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's very interesting. But this next uh, conversation was very interesting to me. I, I am, uh, I love the coffee roasting process. I've been doing a lot of research into the process of roasting coffee because I, I believe that that's where you get the best beverage like right if it's the bean the people that care about the bean and care about the process the most from the uh very first uh opportunity of getting the coffee bean out i think that's where it becomes yeah. really good but he describes this process yeah in this next segment you'll hear adam talk about uh a, i think a very common roasting process in spain and it was new to me very interesting very interesting so let's get right into that you were talking earlier something about um, a type of beans that they use there. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. Um, so you see this a little bit kind of in Spain and Italy, some other countries. It's called a, a torrefacto. Torrefacto. It's hard to say it in English. Uh, basically what they do is they, they caramelize the bean as they're roasting it. So sometimes as much to probably 20% of the mass of the beans in the roaster is sugar. And they're using it basically to heat and to coat the beans to caramelize them. Mm-hmm. And it actually started in Spain back in the Spanish Civil War. Uh, what it does is it allows the beans to last longer. So you can get two to three times longer that the bean will actually last and be good for, um, which obviously if you're a, a business owner, it cuts down on your cost of you know, have to constantly replace beans that are going bad. Um, so it sounds almost like you're like a candy coating, like like a very mm-hmm. bad analogy would be like an M&M. But, yeah. but the candy shell is the the caramelized sugar right and the coffee bean would be like the equivalent of the the chocolate in there yeah so if you were to like look at the beans you actually see like a shiny coating on them and that's not oil like a coffee no you got a dark roast that's coating so does that i guess when you brew that coffee does that yield uh a sweet coffee or just as typical it's a lot more bitter um and the problem too is that if you don't keep track of it it's a possibility that like it could go more rancid also um that, that which then gives good. you a really bitter bitter cup of coffee so so how do you know when it's gone bad you just have to taste it and like <laughs> surprise yeah oh no it's gone bad um 
so yeah, but it makes a really, really kind of strong cup of coffee. Um, when we first went over to Spain and I was trying coffee for some of the first times, I was like, wow, like you get nauseous to the stomach at some places because irritating. Yeah. Yeah. They'll use, uh, most of your restaurants, they'll use like a 70 to 30 ratio or a percentage of 70% torrefacto and then 30%, you know, your normal type of roasting process. And then it's like a standard medium roast. 50, 50. So this is a very interesting uh, idea. So it, it sounds like they're doing a Robusta Arabica combination, Blend. right? Yeah, like something like because that. Because it, it sounds like from the takeaway that they have the ability to caramelize the bean, right? Mm-hmm. So that it can sit on the shelf longer and last a lot longer. And then they'll take and add another bean with it. Is yeah. that what I'm, and did I, did I, I'm not entirely sure to be honest with you, but, um, so it, neither am I. So here's the deal. So if anybody <laughs> is listening to this any and other you Spanish know listeners? about this process, any, any roaster out there that knows about, um, this process, not what we do here. Cause I think we don't, we don't, from what I understand, um, and what I've read up very rarely do anybody use robusta beans it's all arabica because it tastes the best Mm -hmm. Um, robusta bean is a very bitter um it's a very caffeinated bean from what i understand it's it's what um some of these um third wave really dark uh like what's that um black rifle i think black rifle uses uh arabica beans this is a very caffeinated uh jittery joe's i think uh does some um robusta uh, if you know about this process, please leave yeah, a comment. A like line. seriously, sure. look us up on Instagram. Shoot us out. Uh, we uh, DM. I would love to know more about this. But very, very interesting uh, concept. But we're gonna get back into the episode. And uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it. What has been maybe the best coffee you've had over in Spain? Oh man, um, there's a few places that are some restaurants that are doing a better job. There's it's a chain, but it's called Royeri. And it's actually a French chain, but they Fr- come into French, Spain. A French chain in, in in Spain. Okay, that makes a good cup of coffee. It's one of my favorites. Um, so I mean, I'm always kind of now looking and seeing like what type of beans are they using, or what uh, you know, what brand is this, and trying to pay a little bit more attention to what are they doing that makes me, you know, why do I like this cup of coffee more so than what other cup of? So coffee. you're well on your way to becoming a coffee snob, is what you're. Uh, I'm I'm trying to, you know, I really want to to learn more about it and to kind of dig into it. As I was leaving Spain and starting to notice more about, um, you know, oh, I really liked that cup of coffee. Like, why did I like that? Was Mm -hmm. it, what is this place doing differently that makes me like a cup here better than at this other place? So I kind of started paying attention more and then coming back, um, you know, just paying closer attention to different places and kind of looking at stuff on, on, you know, YouTube videos and reading blogs and things like that. And then actually listen to your podcast a little bit. I was like, Oh, this is cool. You know, some, I was starting to kind of dig my teeth in a little bit more into like, you know, what is it that I actually like here? Mm-hmm. So what have you, since you've been here for a little bit, what have you determined that you enjoy like a medium roast, dark roast? Yeah, I definitely, um, more of a medium roast. I like, uh, I still kind of my latte latte is kind of the one I go to the most, but trying to kind of stretch the boundary there a little bit more, um, starting to look at, you know, what type of beans and, you know, different flavors and see if I can actually start to pick up on some of that a little easier. Um, like I said, we've done a lot with like cafeteras. So the percolating method, uh-huh. um, but I'd be interested to do more like, you know, what is a siphon or what is a pour over and what are the de- kind of benefits of each of these and trying each of those out. Yeah. So you've you've been over here for a little bit and you've kind of experienced some good coffee, some good quality beans. Mm-hmm. Are are uh, beans accessible to you over in Spain? Like I, I'm guessing you don't have, like you said earlier, a lot of roasters where you can go buy freshly roasted beans. Yeah, and it's it's interesting, you know, even even if you were to go to like a food line grocery store here or somewhere like you would go down a coffee aisle and you'd probably see I don't know how many brands of coffee. A couple dozen, yeah, a couple dozen. Well, in Spain, you go down the coffee aisle and it can be an area that's like our equivalent of what would be like a Walmart. And there's just like, there's no variety. You basically have maybe two or three brands of coffee that's there. And that's always kind of shocking to me because people think, oh, you know, 
Europe is like, you know, all about coffee and they really uh-huh. are, but like, they're not about varieties of coffee. Like you mm-hmm. wouldn't go into any coffee shop in my town and see like someone doing a pour over or something like that. Like espresso is it like espresso that's what coffee game. is. Um, so they're, they're about the espresso, but I wouldn't say there's much variety. There's what we see here in the U S that's interesting. Cause yeah, I think they say Italy's the birthplace of espresso. Mm-hmm. I wonder, like you were saying earlier, if, um, if you'll start to see more roasters over there, if there's, if there's even a market for that. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's interesting. We did have a Starbucks in our town probably about 10 years ago and it closed shop and didn't, you know, couldn't make it there. And, um, so it had to move to another town farther away. And now they're kind of looking at maybe opening up a Starbucks again in our town. So it makes me think maybe we are kind of heading back in the direction of people being, a little more open to what types of coffee that they're drinking americanized coffee right. mm-hmm. interesting how are you going to take back what you've learned about coffee while you've been back in the states when you go back to spain yeah i think just um <clears throat> probably starting at home with some basic stuff maybe like learning a little bit more about pour overs you know getting mm-hmm. a balance and actually tr- starting to make sure my ratios of you know water to coffee bean is correct uh, some of those simple things that I can start to adjust um, just to make a better cup of coffee. And then just seeing, you know, pay more attention to where I go. Yeah. I'd love to maybe go more into Madrid now, which is, you know, 10 million people. So Madrid has a lot more options and just see some of these coffee places that are probably popping up there and getting a better idea of, you know, what are they doing um, and where are they getting their beans from and things like that. Yeah, that's really cool. Hopefully uh, when you guys go back, and you experiment and see some new stuff maybe you can keep us in the loop send some pictures or maybe even do some reviews from (laughs) espanol yeah that'd be awesome cool well adam we thank you for coming on and talking a little bit about spanish coffee thank you we'll talk to you again in the future awesome so tyler i was really excited about this episode when you called and told me that he was going to be on it this this is a big deal because this is something that I, i would say most of our viewers have never experienced yeah like i said it was new to me and it was really interesting um learning a little bit about the spanish coffee and it sounds like you know adam is fairly new to his coffee journey and um hoping that i we're going to be able to stay in touch with him when he travels back to spain maybe we can uh interview him across the pond as yeah. he's learning more about spanish coffee well he's he's that type of guy that is just going to He's going to get caught up in the details. I mean, like seriously, which is what I love. Like I love the little intricacies of the different way that they're processing it, roasting it, um, and, and just really love learning and all about the data. And that just sounds so much like Adam because, I mean, he's been on a very short coffee journey. Like the amount of knowledge that Adam knows uh, is a lot for a very short amount of time. So I really hope you enjoyed it, enjoyed this. We will have Adam on again very soon. For sure. He'll be heading back to this, uh, to Spain sometime here shortly. But Adam, thank you so much for being on this episode. Tyler, thanks for having him yeah, man. on. Man, it was a really good um, conversation. I learned a lot. Uh, I was very excited for this to go live. When I got the preview file to listen, I was like, oh, dude, this is going to be good. Yeah, it was so, fun. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. Yes. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode of the Coffee Snobs. We've got a couple other interesting episodes coming yes, uh, very shortly. Did. Some interviews and some more travel locations. I guess our travel, uh, you know, those ad dollars are really rolling dude, in. really rolling, do- rolling in. I mean, seriously, <laughs> like... It's uh, it, we're, we're going, what? I think next episode, it, we're going uh, to Louisville, Kentucky. And, and then there's one episode where we're going to the happiest place on earth. Happiest place <laughs> on earth. Yes, we are. So that's exciting. Lots of fun stuff coming up. Hopefully maybe if it's another Canadian episode, Chad could join us for that one. But well, that, that is true. We do miss Chad. Hopefully I can talk with Chad soon. I need to give him a uh, hug. Yes, we do miss Chad. He'll be back on soon. Yes. But So, uh, if you have enjoyed this episode, like I said, every episode, if you don't mind, go to Apple Podcast or whichever provider you listen to and rate and recommend the Coffee Snobs. That just helps us spread the word so we can hopefully go into more ear holes. Uh, Yeah. If you want to reach out to us on social media, we have Coffee Snobs Podcast on Instagram. Uh, Hey, and tag us in your photos. Like, seriously, seriously. like if you do an Instagram story and you're at a shop 
and we love reposting. We love sharing photos. I, I take, I'm that guy that'll be at a coffee shop and take like 10 photos of the coffee of process. You are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, please Tag share us in your photos, yep. do all that fun stuff. Aaron, if, if people want to reach out to you on social media, where can they find you? They're going to find me on the gram at Aaron Beaver, A-A-R-O-N-B-E-A-V-E-R. Right. What about you, Tyler? Uh, I'm on the gram also, Ty Dancy, T-Y-D-A-N-C-Y. Mr. Chad is Chad Lingafelt. That's however right. That's spelt. Yep. And uh, for this episode, we are the Coffee Snobs. We will catch you next time. Yes. Adios. Peace.